Good, good evening and welcome to the PMBC meeting of uh, Wednesday, June 28th. Uh, first thing on the warrant is, uh, <laughs> on the agenda is the warrant. Um, I can't bring it up on the screen because I'm on my phone, but we only have one item. It's uh, Russo Bar for uh, engineering services for the high school roof, seven hundred and ninety dollars uh, for the month of May services. Um, I only got this from uh, Michelle about five thirty this afternoon, so I didn't have a chance to circulate it. <clears throat> but uh, is there any uh, discussion on that? I motion to make it uh, to pay it. Okay, uh, is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, Bartlett seconds. Uh, roll call vote, Bob. Bob Romley, yes. Uh, Bartlett? Bartlett, yes. Uh, Mike? Mike Scaduto, yes. Steve Moore, yes. Stacy. Stacy, yes. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Stacy. Stacy, yes. Okay. okay, thank you. Um, next on the agenda is library update, uh, Brian. Yeah, uh, the, the last thing that we had is just closing out the change order work. I brought that up to the previous meeting that we were we received a, a change order at the end of the project, um, which is not how uh, we usually vet out change orders. Uh, it was at roughly $15,000 for some additional equipment that needed to be purchased in order to get the, the system uh, required. Uh, that was reviewed by the engineer. They had some pushback on it. I did as well uh, in talks with the PMBC and with the contractor. We were able to get that to about 11, uh, just a little bit over $11,000. Um, and I know it's a little unique situation. PMBC was was overseeing a library project. Some of the um, solar project was being funded from elsewhere. Uh, I just wanted to um, bring that to the committee's attention that, uh, that, that is our recommendation, uh, to, to close this project out. Um, we have, uh, gotten signatures from, from my office, uh, and from the town administrator and from, uh, the engineer of record, uh, for the ag agreement of that recommendation. So, um, I believe, um, if there's any comments or if there's any issues, let me know, but I believe that's going to be circulated through, uh, Michelle Reynolds in the accountant's office. Uh, for the amendment to the PO, uh, and then that would be paid. And that would be the last uh, remaining piece uh, of bills to be paid for uh, the library. Um, the only remaining piece is just still waiting from our lead consultant and the greenhouse um, committee on, on giving us a uh, accreditation for, for the library. So uh, we had the, uh, the architect check in with them yesterday. Uh, he's not received an update uh, as of today. So I assume there'll be a final invoice from Vertex as well. Uh, for the library? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yes, the, yes, there will be one for, for very, very minimal labor um, for, for closing this project out. So Brian, as we talked about maybe a week or so ago, I, I need you to verify that uh, all the uh, documents have been uploaded to the town website. Yep. Um, I was planning to reach out to uh ed but i didn't get around to that so if you can touch base with the uh current building commissioner and sure. kind of confirm that yeah i can do that no and if, there's, if there's anything missing such as meeting minutes and uh rfis have it all uploaded yep yeah no problem okay brian do we have a final total on the cost of the building and the um solar panels <clears throat> Uh, so for the solar project, um, I believe the final cost, uh, total project budget or the construction that we had for it? Total. Uh, I don't have it right in front of me, Bob, but the, it was, it was, I think, just right around 170 contract with the contractor, um, finished up at about 135. There was a commissioning agent. There was some uh, fees from our designer for the bid packaging a uh, small amount of project management fees. Uh, and then there was uh, bidding fees that came with that to go through. Um, we had to go through bid docs online twice. If you remember the first time we put it out to bid, we actually didn't receive any any um, any bids. So those, that's smaller money, but it's still annoying that we still had to go out twice on that one. So I believe the total was roughly around 170,000. I can get you the uh, updated final total cost of the project at this point. 
Okay. Yeah, that'd be good. I think that's what Bob's looking for. Yep. Any, any uh, other questions on Littleton uh, Library? Okay, over to the uh, high school roof. <clears throat> Brian can't make it tonight, but he did say that... Uh, what did he tell me? Um, the masonry contractor was supposed to start this week, but due to rain... It'll be starting uh, after the 4th. And then after that, the uh, roof will go on. <clears throat> I've asked, I asked him what the uh, duration of the project was. I didn't hear back from him. But uh, anyway, the work should start next week. Last time, the last meeting, Steve, I think he said mid August. <clears throat> the, that would be the end? Yes. Okay. Good to know. Um, that's all I've got on the high school roof. Senior Center, Brian? Yep. Uh, for an update for our Senior Center, I provided some documents I sent out this morning because there was still some um, uh, information that I was waiting on, uh, some of which I'd like to show you guys this evening. Um, we've, we've reconciled our estimates. We've gone through a full uh, value engineering. I've sent out also the reconciliation um, Mike, I'm not sure if that's something you'd be interested in. I did send that out uh, this morning, which would be the reconciled budget between our third party and with Commodore um, on where we stood. Um, from from yeah, there, happy to happy to look at it. <clears throat> okay, um, we went through a, a significant round of, of valuing out. We had a meeting with um, the town administrator, the senior center director. Um, uh, select board member Mark Rambacher, uh, Bob Romley was present as well, so that we could go through and and make decisions about some <laughs> material switch outs and other things that needed to happen in order to get ourselves under the appropriation that's been done. Um, <clears throat> as we left that meeting, we were right around our appropriated budget, which, uh, uh, according to two town meetings, was around eighteen five um, for the building. We're we're slightly under that right now. But we still wanted to think of some other alternatives in order to um, get some cost savings and drive this uh, cost per square foot number uh, even lower. So I, I, I did want to propose, um, if I could, I do have a, um, a a quick little rendering of what's being proposed by the by the architect. Um, as part of that meeting, we did run a couple of these ideas. It did was received favorably and. Um, Ryan Ferreira, the town administrator, was was on board with proceeding with these changes in order to achieve some more savings with it. I did want to give the PMBC a, just an opportunity to take a look at it, um, just from a aesthetic standpoint, because there is some changes to the multi-purpose room. Um, and, and if there are no um, changes, uh, we would we'd be directing LLB to change this to try to maintain the schedule that we have to finish up their their construction documents. <laughs> Hey, Brian, how, how much contingency do we have? Uh, so with the, the CM at risk, there would be uh, the contingency that the CM carries. And then we're also carrying uh, in my budget. Currently, we have a 5% uh, contingency based on that hard construction number. And then we have a 2% 2 contingency for owner's cost items for whether it's tech items, furniture and equipment, uh, any ads for um, any extra design services, if we need that, that's the that's the other contingency that we built into there. Also, with the reconciled number, there is an escalation contingency that's put into that, um, as well as their overall construction contingency in it. So, there are buffers that hopefully would go away once we receive hard bids from filed sub bids, but that's uh, that's the best estimate that they could achieve with the two uh, estimators reconciling. Okay. <clears throat> think Kirby has his hand up. Uh, yeah, Brian. Um, the last that I had attended, I'd ask questions with regards to the value engineering. Yep. And um, I was told that at that point in time that we'd be back into the mix for conversation. And now Definitely. I'm hearing that the multifunction room has been kind of hammered out and Okay, so your head's shaking, so I appreciate that. Tell me where we are with that kind, sir, because yep. I've been off looking and researching enclosures to put my cameras in so I can keep them up 
and those puppies aren't cheap. So if there are yep. things that are happening, kind sir, um, I'd appreciate an update. Definitely. Um, Thank you. May I be allowed to share my screen? Um, you are co-host, sir. So you may do that, please. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Zoom out slightly here. So the first, uh, one of the first ideas that the designer had on top of some of the material switch outs that we've had uh, is to actually uh, take out a couple swaths out of the building. Um, they identified that there was some extra square footage here in the lobbies, as well as an additional foot in the uh, administrative areas. Uh, which would allow to shrink the building up a little bit and therefore um, reduce the overall footprint of the building by about 600 square feet or 300 per floor. Um, that will reduce, it will not reduce our overall cost per square foot as there are things like plumbing systems and HVAC systems that are going to cost what they are regardless of we take out five feet out of the building. Um, but this would be more of a, a material cost. There will be some site implications that we could get some savings from. Um, there will be drywall, flooring, um, and, and so this was something that we went with Liz, and, and it will not affect their programming um, or the way that they run the building, um, but it was just a, a, a way to um, get some savings upwards in the, in the six figures for this is what we were hoping to get. Um, so the, the Commodore's estimator is also working this through and, and going trade by trade to see what other savings that this would incur. Um, but this was a this was a suggestion that that we felt we could recommend um, uh, to get us some more savings on this. We did the same thing at the uh, library, didn't we? I believe so. Yes. Yeah. This is uh this would be before. Sorry, it's taken a little long to uh, load up. And this would be the after. So it, it's a very slight difference when you see it from the new floor plan. Um, the building would kick from the would kick from left to right uh, to allow uh, ease of excavation coming down the driveway, uh, and it would help with some of the contours and the grading there to make that a little uh, less subtle um, coming down that driveway. So that was the that was the first um, the first recommendation. Ryan, what size are those offices there? Do you know offhand the um, administrators' yeah. office administrative offices? Yeah, um, I don't, Bob, but I believe the up in the director's office, we're looking at um, anywhere. It could be like maybe a 10 by 10, maybe a little larger. Yeah, that's pretty small. Yeah, it's, I was thinking that if we can get away without robbing that, that foot from there, it would be nice. If we can't, then okay. so be it, but... Let me get the, the hard dimensions of those offices for you too. I might be a little shy on the uh, on the on the uh, length of those. And it would be good to know exactly how much savings mm -hmm. we we get by shrinking that office space. Yeah, you know, that one foot or whatever it is, uh, it just may not, uh, you know, may not be worth it. Okay. If we could shrink it on the other side, um, the assistant directors. In that area there, right. I, I think the the intention would be too, Bob, is that once that shrinks, I think that that dividing wall between our director and assistant director would center between the two offices All again. Right. I just um, don't want to see it. You know, the the uh, we shrink it down, and then Liz doesn't have the space that she's going to need there. Yep, understood. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Okay, the second here, uh, this is just the second floor with the same kind of uh, swaths taken out. This is the proposed footing, I mean the proposed footprint uh, where the where the swath is being taken out out of this billiards area. They felt as though there was a little bit of room and flex in order to kind of <laughs> suck that in a little bit uh, and tighten up the footprint. That foot not that they were proposing was coming out of program room one and two as well. Not the way I play billiards. No. <laughs> okay. okay, so the uh, next proposal that, that we are recommending to go forward with, um, this is the original 
exterior rendering that we have at the front of the building. And as you can see, there is a lot of windows that are going in here. There's a lot of lower windows, upper windows, all of which need to be framed out. Um, all have will probably be custom orders. Uh, and so the charge with them was with LLB was to create a, uh, a simpler design with the windows um, in order to save some costs, not only with the cost of the window itself, but that the installation and, and the framing that would need to go with it. So that results in a proposed uh, front rendering of something like this, uh, a little more simpler design, um, more standard sizes on windows um, and ultimately is going to is going to take a, a cut out of our uh, division six or rough carpentry that's going to help with uh, the installation on those windows. Brian, do you have another shot of that? It looks like the, the main roof is coming right down to the front. I do not. You mean right here? Yeah. Yeah. The yes, one that I, Susan I actually showed. have I have one in my next the next slide. Okay. Yeah. And I'll just walk into the third uh the third proposal that we have is and um Kirby, this is what I was speaking to a little bit earlier is the floor plan would not be changing. The the use of the multi-purpose room would not be changing, but the uh, aesthetics from the outside, the proposal is that the ceiling heights will remain the same. However, we would be removing this gable in the front and making this a flat roof and therefore saving um, all the structural components um, and uh, associated um, HVAC and tempering that would need to go up into that dead space up here in this upper triangle. So this is the original thought of what this uh, gable would look like. And ultimately this would be the proposed solution. There it is. So this will also um, mitigate a lot of different angles meeting at one place where a lot of water will be shedding into one area. Uh, there was a concern and a valid concern from uh, the select board member that the flat roofs always leak. Um, however, we do have some low shallow roof up on the top of the building where we'll be hosting where the proposed future uh, PV panels would be going. Um, and this also, this flat roof would be able to, um, we, we would work with the manufacturer for any type of proposed solar panels that maybe would be going on top of that. Um, so at, at the meeting that we had on Monday, this was received pretty positively. I think Liz liked the idea, and I, I don't want to speak for you, Bob. I thought you thought that it looked you thought it looked okay as long as you know, uh, yeah, we were going to be getting some savings. I liked it, Brian. Yeah. Um, and so I, I just wanted to make sure that the committee was aware of this, so that before we issue any type of our next round of documents, so that everyone can review the actual documents, that this would be a an exterior change that has happened for the for the actual um, the gable size and and the um, and ultimately the look of the multi-purpose room from from outside. So, so Brian, is 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 this going on the um, COA website? Not not yet. Okay, Brian, the um, the stone rendering that you have down at the uh, on to the far right part of the building there. Is that going to get dropped down so it looks more like a foundation instead of a... a um... Correct. One of the... Mm -hmm. And LLB, the, the designer, stressed to me that these are kind of quick conceptual drawings that they wanted to make sure that you guys got to see. Some of the, the um, value engineering that we've done is lowered some of that water table and the masonry that goes around the perimeter. By lowering that, that that's a pretty uh, costly square footage cost. And so, as you can see out towards the rear of that, there's a lot of walls that we're lowering in order to um, in order to save, and we would bring down the fiber cement siding uh, lower in order because it's a it's a cost effective way to to minimize that masonry. So to to answer um, Kirby to answer your point and the the function of the multi purpose room, um, this was this was recommended on Monday night. Uh, because we had our reconciliation and we had some fears about where we stood in our budget standpoint. Um, Suzanne, who's the principal of LLB, uh, is is ready to to discuss. She wants to talk with the, both police and fire and with LCTV um, 
while the the foot the square footage and footprint of the multi-purpose room really isn't changing um they do want to go over provisions and locations and how you how you see uh cameras and, and other things going in this room now, thank you very much for that opportunity brian i think the major concern that we're going to have is is ceiling height um given what we've heard is uh usage scenarios for that yep. location yep. um so I, I look forward to understanding more of the developed plan so that um, wh when we have that conversation, that we have a better picture, literally, of, of that kind of information so that, you know, what we ask for questions are based upon any updated scenarios or Definitely. ceiling coverage. Like, I'm, I'm not sure whether or not you're now going to plan to do sheetrock for the ceilings or, or right. given, given the... The, the usage that is planned in there, whether or not they want to do tiles because they're easier to replace, you know, all that kind of trade-off strategy exactly. um, that will impact us as far as um, what we might be doing. So thank you sure. very much, sir, for that explanation. Thank you. Anything else, Brian? No, just if, uh, if there's no real objections or anything on, uh, you know, regarding these, um, because of our schedule, we're, we're, we're already implementing some of the VE that was kind of lower hanging fruit that we would call kind of a material change and, and other things we were talking about. Um, but in talking with the town administrator, this is the direction that we would start directing LLB to go towards. And Commodore, uh, in turn, would be uh, adjusting their estimates as they go along to see what the savings would be. I make sure I turn that back over and refresh my total project budget for everybody. I did speak with... Um, with the town administrator uh, and I requested that we get um, to, to provide an update. We need to get in front of the planning board and uh, we'd also like to put an update for the, for the select board and then possibly for our community presen presentation. I think we went and had a community presentation about a year and a half ago and we all weren't still sure about the size and look and feel of this building. And then I think it'd be a good idea to give the opportunity just to let the community know what our schedule is uh, and ultimately, um, what the building is going to look like. Right. When, when, when do you, when do you think you would have that? So the, so the select board meeting, um, I believe is the first week of August. I believe that's what he told me. Planning board is, um, either the same first week of August, or there's also a meeting at the end of July that, that we would be getting on. I still need to talk to the civil engineer to make sure that he's prepared to provide the stormwater and site plans that are going to be required for for planning board uh, sign off. Okay, Ryan. The yep. at the meeting the other day, Mark uh, Rainwalker <clears throat> had mentioned something about the um, the court, the bocce ball court. Was was that something that was proposed um, in, in the uh, whole building? Did, did we put a pickle? We put a uh, bocce ball court there or what yeah i believe that was part of a what the you know when they did their need study and they went through when they were sizing out things and they were sizing the the exterior as you can see here there used to be a pergola out front that's been taken out of the project at this point as well i believe a bocce court was a was an idea that came up that they implemented we ended up taking out a majority of the components of that bocce uh court the the granite any of the lighting, the concrete walkway around it is now bituminous. Um, so right now it's more or less a skin and bones bocce court. If we took it out completely, um, there would be very minimal trade-off because we'd still need to loam and seed um, that area. So we can we can definitely look into that's that's a at this point I think we've taken all of the major components out to get the savings. If we wanted to take it out completely, um, we can do that as well. So. I just wondered if it's, it you may, might be better off to just take it. I'll get a sure. get a um, an idea from everybody what they think. And I I think like Mark was talking the other day, just take it out. Take it out. Okay. So I can. What I'll do is I'll speak with the estimator and talk about complete elimination of that out back, rather than just the other components. If there's going to be any type of a a good savings, or whether or not the the town even wants it and wants to just have it grass, we can. We can we can go into that no problem. It's a thought. Yep. Mm -hmm. You want to um, 
hit but, on the other things that they um they looked at, like the benches and stuff like that, or just wait for the proposal to come out? Yeah, we'd like. I think I'd wait for the the refresh drawings to come out to send mm -hmm. to everybody, and then I can put the value. I did add the value engineered list to the email this morning. If anybody has any questions with those, please let me know. Um, some of those are just uh, a lot were decorative, uh, a lot were moving things around, a lot were deletion of certain materials and adding something new. Well, that's, <clears throat> that's a great update, Brian. Any other uh, questions for Brian? Yes, uh, Brian, just a quick keep in, keep in mind, please. You know, <clears throat> we're going to have cameras in the multifunction room but there's also plans to put uh, several into the kitchen area so that we can use that location for uh, cooking shows. So just, um, you know, keep that in mind if somebody asks, you know, what kind of AV requirements there are uh, yeah. for that kitchen area. That was original plan. So okay. is that, um, would those just be POE locations run back to the MDF room? Yes, sir. And that's that's the whole rationale for me to explain it to you that those are additional conduits or panduits, whatever you guys want to use to get that um, connectivity back to the, the LCTV area. Got it. Understood. OK, thank you, kind sir. Thank you. Hey, Kirby, you had a question about uh, test pits. Oh, yeah. Um, Brian, oh. Um, in reading through the document um, as a bystander or a resident, um, there's uh, an item or two in there that talk to the DPW will be instrumental in providing a backhoe to dig the <laughs> test pits. Um, does DPW, are they on board with that, sir? No, not the, uh, at this point, that was a, I, I'm not sure which one you were reading on on this and thank you for the reminder on it. Um, <laughs> we do need test pits to be dug. Um, it's going to be done by our uh, geotechnical engineer. And I did want to bring that up to the, to the committee. I know I'm still, um, <laughs> I'm still sharing my screen so I can show you this. This was a proposal brought to me by LLB. And part of our value engineering is that we need to identify exactly the soils that are underneath the tennis courts or around it. Currently right now, Commodore is carrying uh, the export of all that soil as a classified RS1 or RCS1, uh, which could be very expensive to move off site. If this soil is going to be exported off site, we would need to environmentally test the material anyway. Um, so this proposal uh, is for $11,000 is for um, OTO, which is their, their consultant, would come out and dig their own test pits, would, would environmentally test that material. We do believe that it's the same makeup as the, uh, as the library site. There was one boring that showed some um, the ash and cinder that we that Bob had mentioned that there was a an old incinerator that may have been in that area. What we'd like to do is to um, really get the magnitude of what that is, and then we can drop that number that we've had been carrying in our budget to unregulated fill. Um, and then obviously that would help our budget um, so that a site contractor can can properly bid on the export of the soils. There was still thoughts of getting it, um, disposing some of it on site too. Correct. Yeah. Around so the library. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do a walkthrough with the civil and see if some of that. Currently, right now, they're saying about seventy five hundred cubic yards need to be uh, shipped off site. If there's some areas around in the neighbor's property that's currently in the possession of the town, if there's some area on the side of the driveways that can uh, lose some fill, uh, we're going to explore that. Um, and we're going to trade that off with any clearing that we'd need to do based on or if it's cheaper to haul it off as unregulated fill. Any, any other questions on this senior center? Okay, thanks. Thanks, Brian. We'll move, move on to member input. Thank Bob. you. I'm all set, Steve. Uh, Mike? No, I'm good, thanks. Stacy? Uh, I'm good. I just didn't know if we should go over the Shaker Lane Building Committee stuff. I don't know if that was on the agenda or not. I think it was. Oh, yes, it was. I missed it. Yep. Got some minutes to approve, too, Steve. I skipped over both of those. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Shaker Lane Feasibility Study, we got the uh, 
comments back from MSBA, was it yesterday? Yesterday or today. Um, they've made some um, very substantial edits. Uh, so Steve and uh, Ryan are going to be looking at that. I made some comments this afternoon. Uh, we have to adjust the schedule. Um, but I think uh, all the uh, edits were uh, positive, um, gave more uh, <coughs> more um, clarity to the uh, RFS. Excuse me. Um, so anyway, uh, that will be going back to MSBA once the uh, changes have been accepted and uh, the dates change for the uh, advertisement and all the subsequent activities um that's all all i know do you know any more stacy uh no i think that was um that was more than i actually knew i didn't know that we had gotten anything back i don't know if that popped yeah in i didn't see anything that. what's that okay um I'll, I'll i'll forward the uh draft rfs to you guys so you have it um and then we do have to approve the meeting minutes of 614. Do we have a, a motion to do that? I make a motion we accept the minutes for the 614th meeting. I'll second it. Uh, Bob makes the motion and uh, Mike seconds it. Uh, all in favor, roll call vote, Bob. Bob Romley, yes. Mike? Mike Scaduto, yes. Uh, Bartlett? Bartlett Harvey, yes. Stacy. Stacy, yes. And Steve, yes. Okay, now we'll go down to member input. Uh, or did we do that already? Do it sound as far as Stacy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got. So, uh, Bartlett, do you have any in input? No, I'm good, thanks. And uh, I don't have anything. So, um, next scheduled meeting is July 12th. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there second. a second? Mr. Okay. Chair, before you take your vote, do you want to check on citizens' input since you have someone else here? We have. Oh, Karen. I'm, yeah, Karen. Yeah, Karen, thanks anything? for asking. I'm, I'm all good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Okay, Chair. good. Um, roll call vote for uh, adjournment, Bob. Bob Romley, yes. Uh, Stacy. Stacy Scott, yes. Uh, Mike. Mike Scaduto, yes. Uh, Bartlett. Bartlett Hardy, yes. And Steve, yes. So thanks for your participation.